Okay, today I wanted to talk about one of our new switches. Um, this is a 20 port switch um, optimized with uh, a lot of PoE goodness. Um, so I'll go through the specifics. Um, there's really only one slide here, then I'll switch straight into a demo of the switch. I've got it hooked up in my setup with a few things connected. Uh, and I'll show you some of the different options that it has. Uh, so the switch is the QSW-M2116P-2T2S. Uh, so QSW is a QNAP switch, uh, the M um, signifies that it's managed, so all of our switches that have an M after the first hyphen are managed switches. Um, and at the very end there we've got the 2T2S which is two 10 base T and two SFP plus ports. Um, so we'll go right, right into uh, what the features are of the switch. So um, here on the front of the switch you've got 16 um, 2.5 gig LAN ports and they are all 802.3 AT which is um, the PoE standard that will supply up to 30 watts. Um, so there is a, a more basic standard that only does 15 watts um, so all of our ports are compatible with that as well um, but the maximum possible out of the 16 2.5 gig LAN ports um, is 30 watts. Um, ports 17 and 18 are 10 gig SFP plus ports and these are the only ports on the switch uh, that do not have PoE of any kind on them. You can't do that down the fiber connection. Um, and then you've got at the end uh, two 10 gig PoE plus plus ports and these are 10 base T so copper connections with CAT6 uh, cables or better. And these uh, with 802.3BT it can deliver 90 watts per port. Now the total power budget across the whole switch is 280 watts. Um, so with lots of things connected there, you can combine um, a total of 280 watts worth of things powered from this central location. Um, so there's also a, a fan status LED. So if it is producing up to that 280 watts, um, thermals are going to get quite hot with the switch. Um, so there's a, a little light on the front just to let you know um, the status of the fan. Uh, you can configure alerts and things in the software if you want to be notified of any problems as well. Um, so that's really enough with the slides that's shown you all the, the main features of the front. So now I'll jump into the management interface. Um, so here you can see um, the one that's connected into my setup and this is the default dashboard. Um, so here we can see a few things, just some basic information about the switch, uh, the total um, picture of the power consumption, so how much is in use, um, how much is available. Um, so when you look down the bottom here, you can see the current port power consumption. So this is my uh, sort of live statistics of what's happening with all my PoE devices that I, I have set up right now. Uh, so my PoE devices consists of um, five IP cameras, um, and four uh, wireless access points that I have around the house. Um, at the top here you can see where things are connected. So if it's got the uh, orange logo on the lightning bolt, it's showing you that that's a port um, that's not only in use, but it's in use for power of Ethernet as well. So I have a few connected um, that are not uh, PoE use, so such as ports, uh, uh, port one there, and we've got ports um, 19 and 20. Um, so none of those have um, any PoE being delivered, but it's showing me green that they're up and running. If you want to change this dashboard around, you can. So there's some drop downs next to a couple of the features here. So here at the bottom where it says current port power consumption. So I can change that to current port traffic if I wish. Uh, you've got to give it a second. It, once you click it, it then starts monitoring. So we'll start seeing the, uh, the graph upticking soon, showing the data. Uh, so right now it's just a bit of traffic through the wireless APs um, and the, the, the cameras feeding out uh, the, the data that they're sending to the NAS that's recording them. Um, so we can see that that traffic's going up and down so you can have that running all the time. Um, and at the top we've got a few more options. So we've got PoE status, you can change it to port status whether the ports are enabled or disabled. Uh, you can change it to the powered device status so it's letting you know um, which uh, uh, class of PoE they're being used. So I can see that um, eight of my nine devices are class three, uh, one is class four. Um, you can go down to VLAN status. If you've got VLANs, you can set those up. I haven't got any VLANs running on here at the moment. And at the bottom, link aggregation status. So I do have link aggregation set up on port 17 and 18. That's the SFP plus ports. And we can see that there, but I'll delve into more detail on that soon as well. Um, so this is the sort of customizable um, overview screen just to give you a whole picture of the switch and, and how you want to see the information. So I normally like to have it on the power consumption um, and the PoE status just to see everything's okay on mine. 
As we go down, we've got devices. So Mac history, this is um, options to scan the network and do Wacon LAN packets to anything uh, that you may have on the network. So you can scan for the MAC addresses and it'll pull up um, names of devices that are on the network if they're resolvable. Um, in configuration, you can go into the ports themselves. Um, so here the first screen is port status. Um, so this is giving you every bit of information you could possibly need um, about the switch uh, switch ports that's on the front. So whether the link status is up or down, um, sort of the state of the port, is it enabled or disabled? Um, what speed has been uh, negotiated by the different items and whether or not you have flow control enabled or disabled. In sport, uh, uh, port uh, statistics, uh, you can go through for a bit more information. So it gives you, um, you know, packet information. You can choose bytes, errors, drops, anything like that, both for the 2.5 gig ports as well as the 10 gig ports. Um, and you can change this graph around as well. So if you want to see it in a different thing, the specific numbers rather than on charts, you can see that. Um, I usually keep it on the graph. It's a bit easier to read. And the final one here is port configuration. So this is where you would um, enable or disable the ports. You can do all ports. Uh, warning, if you do all ports, you will lose access to this interface if you're currently connected through one of the ports. Um, or you can turn them on or off individually. And this is where you'd enable things like flow control and what speed things are being negotiated at. Um, also, you've got options on the right hand side uh, for jumbo frames. So we support uh, jumbo frames all the way up to uh, just over 9000 there. Um, into the PoE options. So with PoE, you've got the main power consumption for all ports. You can drill down to specific ports if you want in the graph. Um, you've also got options for the power configuration. So you can choose whether a port is uh, plain PoE, PoE++, or if we scroll all the way down um, to the uh, final two ports, these will do PoE, UPoE, PoE, or disable. So you can turn PoE off completely if you wish. Um, and here it also gives you information about what the, um, the power consumption is. Uh, you can also prioritize specific ports. So if you are up at the upper limits of the 280 watts uh, power budget, um, you can choose which ones have a higher priority than others so that if uh, the switch needs to deliver 90 watts of power to a specific device, uh, if you set its priority to high but others on low, um, it will get it and it will turn off the, uh, the, the other port to allow the thing that needs the 90 watts to get it. So you can choose uh, what parts have uh, what priority. So you can do critical, high or low. Um, to, to choose between that option. Not something I have to worry about. I'm only using about 35, 40 watts, so plenty of room to grow here. Uh, and you've also got a PoE schedule. Uh, so a PoE squ uh, schedule is really good, especially if you say um, a business and maybe you want to turn the Wi-Fi off um, outside of business hours, let's say. Um, so if say six o'clock in the evening rolls around, uh, generally nobody in the office say from six o'clock in the evening, you can have all the wireless access points turn off um, so that they're not transmitting a signal uh, during the um, sort of out of hours period when nobody's there. Um, so it's really good for setting up different schedules and you can choose a schedule for each port so you can have whichever ports are all bound to it and there's a calendar to activate the schedule so you can have it on off at different times of the day if you need to. Um, so it's a really useful feature if you need to schedule your PoE um, items turning on and off. Uh, VLANs, fairly self-explanatory. You can add a VLAN to a specific port, type in the VLAN number, choose which ports are a member of it, and then you can set up uh, VLANs. They've got untagged and tagged options there. Um, link aggregation. Um, I've got one trunking group set up here on ports 17 and 18 that goes to one of my NAS. Um, so you've got different options here to change it between static or LACP. Um, LACP would be the option you would pick if you're using um, 802.3 AD, for example, um, the, the way I've got mine set up is just round robin, so I've just chosen the static option. Uh, but you can create multiple um, link aggregation groups here if you wish. Um, traffic, so here you can set uh, different rate limits on different people. So there's the MAC address table of who's currently connected, who's been discovered by the switch and rate limits. Uh, so you can configure um, a specific speed limit per port as well if you want to. Um, security, so you can set up different ACLs, so you can come in here and add it and you can set up different um, restrictions that you may want to do um, between uh, different items, so you can restrict, uh, restrict those if you want to. Um, IGMP snooping, uh, you can enable this as well um, if you want to um, sort of put into checks anything to do with multicast or anything like that. So I've got it disabled on mine, uh, but once it's enabled you can even get statistics for it. A QoS or quality of service, so you can enable this, so it basically is traffic shaping, so you can prioritize um, different devices and packets, so you can choose whether it's port based or VLAN based, so you can enable those. Um, port mirroring, um, so this is just monitoring network traffic and forwards a copy of one packet 
um, from one port to another so if anything's arriving at one port it will also be sent to another uh, this is really good if you need to do any um, network monitoring things like that um, LLDP which is link layer discovery protocol this is a, a really cool uh, feature to find out different items on your network so if I turn it on here we can see um, the different devices I've got so I've only got it turned on a few things so it's picked up one of my access cameras and some of my um, access points that I've got um, but it's going to find out the information about them if they're announcing the uh, LLDP information this is where you'll find it in the switch um, and you've also got loop protection so if you were uh, um, configuring a network and accidentally create, created a loop in the network um, where you know they basically would bring the network down um, you can have loop protection enabled uh, and the switch will tell you so even on the overview screen we were on um, if one of the ports was um, basically turned off for looping um, it would have a, a red light next to it so it's going to tell you um, that, that that is the guilty port for the loop so you can go and investigate where the problem is um, in system information, uh, system management, there's a system information section here just giving you a basic overview of the, the status of the switch. So, you know, temperatures, things like that, what speed the fans are going. Um, in settings, you can set your IP addresses, change your password, uh, configure the time if I'm using a time server here, or you can factory reset the switch. Um, some good information in the logs so you can choose which severity level you want so you can choose this to different options so you can see different items uh, right now it's only showing 10 items but if i change it to 50 for example we can scroll through and see a lot more information in the logs um, and also firmware updates um, so you can do a, a check for update where it'll go off and uh, check uh, our website for an update automatically um, or you can go into the firmware update screen and uh, update it manually as well if you need to um, so this is the uh, the, the Q QSS um, software that we've got that's running on uh, all of our managed switches. Um, um, you can do a lot of different uh, things in here, um, a lot of different options. You've even got options up here to restart the switch remotely if you're not able to get to the site. Uh, so you can change that around and you've got the manual built in there as well. Um, so you can create lots of uh, uh, different configurations on the switch for your use case. Um, so in general, um, you know, this would be more uh, beneficial to say a business who's got a lot of PoE devices needs to have a bit of control over the network. Uh, for me, it fits really well in my home environment, um, 2.5 gig networking everywhere. Um, so I'm future proof for any 2.5 gig devices that I have. And I've also got a couple of 10 gig uplink ports on the end. Uh, so if I go back to the, uh, the port section and look at the port status, if I scroll down to the uh, the faster ports at the bottom, um, ports 19 and 20 are my uh, two NAS. So one's my primary NAS, one's the backup NAS. Um, and the 17, 18, uh, the 10 gig options, which I've got to a, a switch that's uh, managing my virtual network. So I've got those bonded together. Uh, but as you scroll up the list, um, currently I've got no 2.5 gig devices detected as connected uh, because my two 2.5 gig devices um, are also capable of 10 gigs. So I've plugged them into ports 19 and 20. Um, but it's a really good, um, a really good switch for just anyone that needs a lot of PoE, uh, wants to also at the same time upgrade to 2.5 gig. Um, there's a lot of access points coming out now, wireless access points, where uh, the wireless transmission rate is getting um, faster than one gig networking. Um, so if you were to have um, uh, the access point connected into a one gig switch, your potential uh, speed loss that you're getting there is going to be quite high. So if you if you'll have a, a wireless access point. I think Aruba Networks does one um, that's got 2.5 gig um, um, outputs uh, for the Ethernet. Um, it will also usually need PO PoE for an access point. So we're able to uh, kill two birds with one stone here. Make sure that we're not doing any limitation um, on the wireless performance uh, of the device. And it can also have power at the same time. Um, if anybody uh, has any questions on this switch, please do let me know. Um, so this was the uh, QSW-M2116P. Uh, dash t2 ts uh, which is our 20 port uh, poe managed switch where four of the ports um, are also 10 gigs so you've got two for 10 base t copper and you've got uh, two for sfp plus for the fiber connection um, and again the the final poe budget there is 280 watts total um, so you can split that among the ports as you need and um, if anyone has any questions please do ask them down below and we'll try to get back to you as soon as possible okay thanks a lot bye